This short video is really a quick introduction into the concept of incorporating uncertainty into project management. Up till now, we've looked at examples and concepts which assumed that we knew perfectly how long each task was going to take. That can sometimes be a little unrealistic, particularly for projects that we've not undertaken before or for, uh, for projects where there's some uncertainty around uh, exactly what the parameters of an activity are. So, th there are uh, a number of ways to uh, incorporate uncertainty. We're going to do sort of one of the basic ones in, in, this, uh, in this video, uh, just to introduce the concept. So, as I said, there can be variability in activity times. Historically, the critical path method, method has assumed we know a fixed time estimate for each activity and there's no variability. Uh, PERT uses a probability distribution for activity times to allow for variability. So really, the only difference here is that uh, we uh, don't know definitively how long projects are going to, uh, how long individual activities are going to take. <laughs> The, the way that uh, the most common way that this is done and sort of the entry level way that this is done is using sort of three time estimates. And this is not an unreasonable approach to, to doing it. Uh, you have an optimistic time. If everything goes perfectly, how fast can you do it? A pessimistic time, everything, if, the, if it goes off the rails, how long will this activity take? And then a most likely time. What's the most realistic estimate? of how long this project will take. And if we get those three numbers, uh, we can come up with uh, an estimated or uh, an expected time. An expectation, if you remember from statistics, is uh, uh, a, balanced, uh, a balanced expectation based on the distribution. And it's not always uh, the most likely time because there can be skewness in one direction or the other. So, uh, there, when there's variability, we estimate follow a beta distribution, and I'm not going to ask you about the beta distribution, I'm not going to show that to you in detail, but what it does allow us to do is come up with an expected time for a task. And the expected time looks very much like a, uh, a weighted average here. You can see it, uh, uh, the expected time is equal to A, which is the optimistic time, plus 4 times M, which is the most likely time, plus B, which is the pessimistic time, divided by 6. And the 6 is simply reflecting the fact that you have 1, four, plus 4 is 5, plus 1 is 6. You are, you are weighting the most likely time uh, heavier than the other ones, and that gives you an expected time. Now, if it's symmetric, if you have one as the optimistic time, two as the most likely time, and three as the pessimistic time, then that's a symmetric distribution, and uh, the expected time becomes the most likely time, which is two. But if you have one, two, and four for the pessimistic time, uh, then you go one plus four plus four, uh, is 9 divided by 6, and you have a number that is greater uh, than, uh, sorry, you have, this is 8, 9, plus 4 is 13. You have a number that's a little bit more higher than the most likely time, uh, and so that's why we do this calculation. Probably the biggest mistake that students make in this PERT uh, is not to take the expected time, but to take uh, this most likely time and then draw the network with that. Let, if, you, if you remember to do the expected time, uh, you're usually off to the races. The variance of a task time, the variance is equal to B minus A, pessimistic time, which is bigger, minus the optimistic time, divided by 6, and then squared. And so that gives you the measure of the variance. Uh, and you, you know, so here's, here's a, a quick example. Optimistic, one, two, three, that's the, that's the example I did a minute ago, uh, and, and then the expected time is two, and then 
3 minus 1 is 2 divided by uh, 6 is 0.33 squared is 0.11. Uh, and then here you have another symmetric one, 2, 3, 4, and you get 3. Uh, but here's another symmetric one. This one is symmetric. This one is not symmetric. 1, 2, 9. And so here, the expected time is bigger than the most likely time because this is skewed out uh, uh, much further than the difference between these two. 3, 4, 11, again, uh, and you can also be skewed the other way. So the simple calculation, here's the expected time, here's the variance, and you calculate those for each activity that you're given. And the information you'll be given or you'll get or, or you'll determine yourself if you're the project manager are the activities, uh, the different times, uh, and at some point you're also going to have to be given the precedence relationships so that you can draw the project now. So if you're doing this, and I have a separate video going through an example of the types of questions you can get and 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 calculating these things, but the uh, so you would have to draw. Uh, the network, do, do the pass from left to right, earliest start, earliest finish, the pass from right to left, latest finish, latest start, uh, and then determine the critical path. The project variance, so once you've got that and you determine the critical path, the project variance is computed by summing the variance of the critical activities. So summing the variances of the tasks or activities that are on the critical path. Again, a relatively straightforward, as long as you've uh, drawn the project network effectively, you will have, uh, you will e be easily able to uh, determine the project variance. And so then, uh, the probability of project completion is the type of question you might get. Project variance is computed by summing the variances of critical activities. We talked about that already. And then uh, in this case, we've got 0.11 plus 0.11 plus 1 plus 1.78 plus 0.11. This is a project, we haven't seen it here, but this is the critical path. We just sum them up. And then the project variance in this case is 3.11. And the project standard deviation, which we will need for our calculations later, is just the square root of the variance is 1.76. So then we've drawn the network, we figured out the project variance, now we can start looking at a, a couple of, uh, at how to do these calculations. PERT makes two more assumptions that I think are worth knowing. These often show up as multiple choice questions on exams, um, uh, but uh, not usually on an assignment. So uh, these are good things to know and I would review them in the textbook. Uh, total project completions time follow a normal probability distribution and activity times are statistically independent. That means that if one, that, that the completion time of this activity is completely independent of the completion time of this activity. So if this activity takes a little bit longer it doesn't affect this one, it still has its regular distribution. And that's, that's all of these that these assumptions do. And, and so for this project, we have a standard deviation of 1.76. We have an expected time of 15. And then we can then say, if we look at this many days, what is the probability that it's finished? Or this many days, what is the probability that it's finished? Uh, and we know that this is normally, di normally distributed, so the, the, and, and the normal distribution is a symmetric distribution. So one trick question that I will often ask is, if the expected time is 15 weeks and the standard deviation is 1.76, what is the probability that you will be done in 15 weeks or less? Uh, and people will spend the time calculating it. It doesn't matter what the standard deviation is in that circumstance. 15 weeks is the mean of the normal distribution. So in that circumstance, the probability would be 0.5. So we, we look at the, the 
normal distribution, and then we can take uh, a Z value, which is TS is the target time, TE is the expected time, divided by the standard deviation. This is another place that students often go wrong. They won't do the standard deviation. They will do the, um, the, the variance, and then they'll get a, a, a value that uh, it causes them some grief. And when you have that Z value, you can go to a standard normal table and find your probability. So uh, if you look, uh, that's really all you need to know about PERT or, the, or, or incorporating variability into, into project tasks, uh, into project management. I'd encourage you to take a look at the uh, example video that I've also posted, which works through an explicit question. So, you need to have optimistic time, most likely time, pessimistic time. You need to then calculate your expected time using that weighted average formula. You then calculate the variance of each individual activity. You then draw the project network and determine the critical path, the expected completion time or the mean expected completion time is the sum of the expected times on the critical path. Your variance is the sum of the variances on the critical path. Then you use this Z statistic and a standard normal table to calculate the probabilities. Relatively straightforward. I think this is usually easier for students uh, than crashing is, but, it, but you need to be careful and avoid uh, the, the, the pitfalls in doing this. That's a quick 10-minute overview, uh, and I'd encourage you to take a look at the example video that is separate, and also to to try a few uh, from uh, uh, try a few examples and just make sure that you know how to do it. This undoubtedly will show up on assignments. Have a great day.